Hello, willkommen in einem anderen aufregenden Video and welcome to yet another exciting video, in this case part 14 of my battle series of videos, which in this case will cover the Battle of Iridium, my apologies for pronunciation, which was a battle fought between the Persians and Greek in about 469 BC or 466 BC, we're uncertain. This video is mainly focused on looking at the battle from a figure game point of view, which includes the order of battle, troop types, and the flow of battle. If you wish a big picture of what the battle was for, then this may not be the video for you, but if you want to know about the troop types, horse mixes, and what actually occurred on the battlefield, then continue to view on. As with many of the Greek-Persian battles, um, I'll be forced to cover this battle with really minimal historical references. As a result, a lot of the guesswork will be occurring in this case. I mean, we're not even certain what year the battle occurred. The Battle of uh, Aramedian was a double battle taking place both on water and on land between the Adelian League of Athens and her allies and the Persian Empire of Xerxes I. It took place in either 469 or 466 BC in the vicinity of the mouth of Aridian River in Palmyra, Asia Minor. I will not be covering the naval battle and will only focus on the land battle. The Battle of Iromedian has been dated to 469 BC based on an anecdote by Plutarch. However, there are issues with this date and there is an alternate date of 466 BC. Let's now drill down into the opposing forces and we'll be first looking at the Greek army. Now, the size of the army can be based on the size of the fleet because that is the only technical reference or historical reference we have. So we may have a rough idea of the troop sizes or numbers that may have been involved in this battle, with one minor exception, and that is the Persian army, as we'll see, soon see. According to Plutarch, the League's fleet consisted of 200 triremes. The standard complement of a trireme was 200 men, including 14 marines. In the second Persian invasion of Greece, each Persian ship had carried 30 extra marines, and this was probably very true in the first invasion, and the whole invasion force was apparently carried in triremes. Furthermore, the Xi'an ships at the Battle of Lade also carried 40 marines each. This suggests that a trireme could probably carry a maximum of 40 to 45 soldiers. Triremes seem to have been easily destabilised by too much weight. There was therefore probably about 5,000 hoplite marines in the Greek fleet. The next question to ask is, um, did the Greeks field light troops in the battle? At 200 triremes, we'd expect there were 34,000 rowers, some of which could have easily been used as light troops. We know this occurred at certain cases in the Peloponnesian War, and as the Greeks would have fought a similar number of Persians, it's reasonable to assume some light troops were you know, present from the rowers. I have no idea how many light troops would have been in the battle, and I will ri possibly rely on the 10% figures, which uh, I earlier uh, you know, ascertained from the Battle of Plataea. Thus, perhaps possibly, we could expect 500 light troops. This is a clearly not a large battle based on these numbers. The wild angle, or the wild card here, is um, the Persians did actually have a land army, so the Greeks must have had additional troops in transports. Now, there is a, um, I think, historian, F.E. Ray, which estimated the Greek army consisted of 6,000 hoplites, 2,000 marines, 800 archers, and some light troops from the ship crews. I think I will probably go with this estimate, and what you see here is my gut feel of the Greek army at this battle which would probably have totaled somewhere around about the 10,000 mark. What I often do is look at um, games or scenarios of the battles, and there is one, the command and colour scenario of this battle. And if we look at this, uh, we can probably ascertain that the unit scale seems to be 1 in 1,000 for the hoplites and 1 in 400 for the light troops. I find this rather odd, but anyway, that's the way this particular board game runs or works. We'll go through the troop types, um, and I'll try and be brief. Uh, and as normal, I will be using the DBMM version 2.1 army list. One of the references by the historian mentioned earlier indicates the Athenians had 800 archers. 
As they were specifically mentioned, I guess that they are rather unique. Based on the Command and Colour board game, um, I'm guessing that there was a similar number of javelmen, which probably were specifically trained and armed rowers from the fleet. The bulk of the Greek army consisted of hoplites, um, and according to this army list, uh, it was this quality, ordinary. I'm guessing the marines may have been the same as the hoplites, although it's possible they have been, that they may have been inferior quality well, as well. Now, there is one little point about this, is that when we actually go over the Persian army and create an army list, these numbers um, are such that it's unlikely the Greeks would ever win this battle. So I'm possibly guessing that um, either the Greeks were of superior quality, um, after all they've been doing reasonably well for the previous few years, um, or alternatively possibly the Persians were an inferior quality. The other option is that the Greek army is actually larger than this. That's just how vague um, information sources I have. Let's now go to the Persian army. Now, um, as with the Greeks, we'll be using the fleet to size up our force, although this does not give us an idea of how large the Persian army that was waiting on land was. As with the uh, Greeks, if the Persians had about 200 triremes, we arrive at 500 medium or heavy troops, and additional light troops and rowers, which is about the same as the Greeks. If we go with our F.E. Ray estimate, um, he estimates the Persian army consisted of 6,000 spearmen and archers, you know, Spatabara almost certainly, 3,000 Calabine peltasts, 600 cavalry, and some surviving marines from the fleet. This shows my best guess, uh, with the unknown values coming from the command and colour board game. What you can see here is the Persian army was probably larger than the Greek army, which actually seems quite reasonable. Let's uh, look at the command and colour board game to identify where I came up with some of the unknown values. Now, the unit scales are really all over the place, so I have to assume that the three medium infantry are joined with the three light bow to represent our Spartabaran troops. The light infantry scale, based on our Greeks, is about 1 to 400, so we get 1,200 light infantry. The remaining light bow represents the possibly surviving marines. Now this is a pretty weak conversion, but it's all I have, and as a result I'm going to go with the FE Ray estimate which you saw earlier. Let's now drill into our DBMM army list version 2.1 for the Persians. According to Command and Colour, the Persian had 600 cavalry, which is very reasonable, and I would estimate most of it would have been standard medium cavalry. There may have been some very light cavalry, but I think it would either be in very low numbers or non-existent. As with most of the Persian armies of the period, the bulk of the Persian army consisted of Spatabaran foot, totaling 6,000 men, which is my estimate, and with the marines possibly added in to this as well, probably another 500, maybe even 1,000. Based on the command and colour, we're estimating the Persians have 1,200 light infantry, which are probably mainly bow-armed. Finally, we come up with the light infantry, um, and there could have been some javelmen as well. Where I have a little bit of confusion is uh, trying to identify where the peltasts, peltasts were, or what type of troop types they were. You'd also have to add them as well, and I don't have a slide for that. Now, according to the Command and Colour board game, uh, their comment is that the battle was a fierce struggle with the more heavily armed hoplites prevailing before the Persian cavalry could turn the Greek flank, and the Persians were routed with heavy losses. This victory ended the Persian threat to Ionia and the Greek islands, but saw the conversion of the Delian League into the Athenian Empire. Now let's try and identify the battle, or the location of the battle. According to Plutarch, the Persian fleet was anchored off the mouth of the Iremedian River, which is shown here. There is a nice beach on both sides of the river, and the battle could have occurred on either side. My wild guess is that it probably occurred on the left, as this is flatter, but then on the other hand, you could also suggest it could have occurred on the right, because basically the flat pit is uh, behind some rough terrain. Um, I'm guessing the left side, but you know, other players could certainly go for the right side if they so wish. 
if you go and look at the river, the rivers are not particularly large, so I don't think any of the naval battle would have occurred there, or I don't think any of the ships would have gone up the river. Now, the Persian army was probably camped somewhere, let's say here, if the battle occurred on the left, and probably formed up around here, in the location you see here, during the naval battle. When the naval battle was lost, the Persian fleet probably beached close to the army, and the crew madly made their way to the safety of the Persian army, which would be fairly close, according to this. Um, the distance here from the beach to where I've got the Persian army is about a thousand metres. It could have been closer, but I think a thousand seems reasonable. Now, once the Persians had beached and the crew ran away, the Greek navy and its transports beached in the same location as the Persian, Persian fleet, so they could capture the boats or destroy them. At the same time, the Greeks formed up their army to face the Persians. The Persian army now began to move towards the Greek fleet, well, at least according to the command and colour reference. Despite the, despite the weariness of his troops after the first battle, Simon, the Greek commander, seeing that his men were exalted by the impetus and pride of their victory and eager to come to close quarters with the barbarians, landed the marines and proceeded to attack the Persian army. My gut feeling is the Persians simply formed into a better defensive position and the Greeks went out after them. Based on our command and colour reference or um, account, the quote is as follow. Initially, the Persian line held against the Athenian assault, but eventually, as at the Battle of Mycenae, the heavily armoured hoplites proved superior and routed the Persian army. Fleeing back to their camp, the Persians were then captured along with their camp by the victorious Greeks. I'm guessing the Persians may have held advantageous grounds or even uh, prepared some mineral defences. As their tactic was based on missile fire, this seems reasonable. As a result, when they approached the Greeks, they were simply taking up good defensive terrain or positions. I'm not sure why the Persian cavalry seemed to have minimal effect. Perhaps the army was very close to the beach, and as such, there was no room for, the, for them to manoeuvre behind the Greek position. This shows a possible force mix for the battle using the SPI pre-stag rules, um, and a force mix which has been converted into a DBMM version 2.1 troop type. Um, while this does use a DBMM points value, there is actually a slight modification of specific types of leaders, um, as I am using this for pre-stags or pre-17th century warfare rules, which does require this slight modification. But this only really changes the points values of the leader by one or two points per leader. So you could use, use this for a pure, D, pure DBMM game. Now, the Greek army of 58 points is against the Persian army of 78 points, which does seem like this should be an easy Persian victory. I suspect some modification of the force mix is required, perhaps making the Greek hoplites superior or increasing their numbers. I would also halve the scale and, as a result, double the number of elements. So, you know, my gut feeling is that I think this should be a Persian army of about 150 points and a Greek army of, let's say, 180 points, something along those lines. And so we come uh, to the end of my part 15 of my military history video series. In this case, a mini series of videos which basically cover the Greek-Persian Wars. And this is pretty much the last of the battles which occur between the Greeks and Persians in this period. Uh, so this probably ends this mini series. Alle guten Dingen, kommen zu einem Ende.